Hey everyone, it's Jim Nix with Nomadic Pursuits and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to show you how I created this co uh, selective color image using Aurora HDR Pro. The image started like that, a full color HDR, and this is something I shot on a side street in Bratislava, Slovakia a few years ago. Uh, the red door caught my eye as, as the color red tends to do. And uh, anyway, I like the HDR, but I started playing around with selective color ideas in Aurora and wanted to sort of put it to the test. So here we are. So I'm going to close that. Um, I'll show you how I made that image and then also uh, a little bit more dramatic version, which is there. So the first thing I do is I open Aurora and then I want to bring this um, Bratislava image in. So I hit uh, load and I'm going to grab this HDR and load it up, create HDR. Now it's an HDR photo that I've previously created. In fact, I created it a few years ago, shared it on the blog and all that. But uh, uh, today I'm just gonna do the, uh, the selective color piece. I'm not gonna recreate the, uh, recreate the HDR. So here it is, you're in Aurora. Uh, usually the if you look here, the structure goes up a little bit when you first open uh, Aurora HDR Pro. In fact, you can tell what's been done based on the color here. If you see orange, that means something in that category has been adjusted. So, uh, and white, of course, means nothing has. So I'm just going to hit the reset. Everything's back to the way it started. Uh, and the first thing I do is create a layer for the black and white. I'm just going to call that BW for short. Um, and what I want to do is I want to uh, convert everything to black and white except the door, as you saw in the initial image. So I'm going to start by getting the brush, and I'm going to make it a whole lot smaller. And I'm going to change the opacity to 100 because I want it to be uh, fully covered. And I'm going to brush in over the door. And then uh, I'm going to invert the mask. So this is going to take me just a moment. Let me, uh, if you click up here, you can see the mask. There it is. And you can see what I've missed. And then I'm going to shrink that and try to clean this up here. This takes me just a moment. You want to get your mask pretty clean. Uh, that's not bad. I'm going to do a little erasing around the edges. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. So let me just clean this up. This takes just a minute. Okay, we're getting there. But this is the uh, really important part because you're not wanting the other colors to bleed through. And so you want to make your mask as, as clear as possible and as clean as possible. So I do the full uh, opacity of 100% so that it's uh, going to be fully obscured on this layer. And then I want to make this these edges as, as about as crisp as I can get them. And again, this is a little bit rough because I'm not taking a whole lot of time to do it. But uh, there we go. You, you want it to be as clean as you can because when you start taking the color out, uh, you want to make sure that you're taking it out of the right places. So that mask looks pretty good. Um, yep, I think that looks good. So... The thing is, on the black and white layer, I'm actually going to be masking over all the rest of it, not the door. So what I want to do is just actually just go and invert the mask. And so I did that. And now if you look here on the layer, you can see that the mask has changed. But also if I if I highlight the mask button, you can see that the mask has changed, right? And actually see a little bit of that, um, oops, excuse me, a little bit of that uh, mask that might need to be cleaned up. So I'm going to go do that real quick uh, along these edges. Oops, sorry, wrong side. Yeah, you invert it and things uh, reverse on you. You got to remember that. Oops, and I just made a little bit of a mistake there, made it a little too wide. That's okay, it's really easy to fix in Aurora. You just grab your brush and you, you just, you know, scoot along the edges and, and fix it and tidy it up. So a little bit more here. Okay, I think we're good. So now I've got the mask, is, uh, I'll show it to you one more time. There you go, the mask covers the entire image except for the door. And what I wanna do is take the color out of it. So it's going to color, I take saturation, take that down to zero, and vibrance, take that down to zero. There you go. Uh, in many ways you could say, hey, I'm done. Um, I notice in a little bit around the edges, some of the mask could be a little cleaner. So I'm gonna go and do that real quick while we're sitting here. Oh gosh, yeah, see? I get backwards because I inverted the mask. I did that again. So you gotta make sure you're using the eraser, uh, I'm, excuse me, the brush and not the eraser uh, at the right time. So I had them backwards again, but 
It's because of the mass conversion. There we go. That looks pretty clean. So I'm going to be done with that. Yeah, I think that looks good. So anyway, so if you take the uh, turn the layer off, that's back to the original photo. And here you go. Uh, that's creating a layer, making it uh, uh, making a mask around the door and inverting it uh, so that you're just adjusting the rest of the image and not the door and then completely removing all the saturation. The other thing I might do uh, is do a little bit of contrast to bump up. Um, when you have a black and white scene, I think a dramatic black and white actually looks really good. Uh, and, and I'm the first to admit, I almost never process photos in black and white. Uh, I think about it time to time, but I, I'm such a big color guy that uh, it's hard to do for me. It's hard to do that. So, um, But I'm going to come in on the black and whites here and bump up the clarity a little bit on this black and white layer. Maybe even the HDR look a little bit just to give a little bit more drama. So, Excuse me. So now going back to the original, there's the original and there's the image. Um, you could be done, honestly. Um, it's, I think it looks totally fine. But I'm going to do something else. I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to call this color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the mask from down here. So I'm going to say copy mask and then I'm going to paste that mask on this layer. Paste mask. Okay, so now the, uh, uh, although I need to invert it, there we go. So now I've got a mask for the uh, the door, right? And what I wanna do is go up, bump up that door a little bit. So I'm gonna move the clarity and uh, I'm gonna move, let's see, I might do a little color. I might make that red a little bit more vibrant. That's a little too much. Um, and maybe warm it up just a tiny bit. I'm really trying to make it stand out. And uh, I think that'll be about it. Maybe a little contrast. I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a huge difference, uh, but that's the before. That's the after. So it's, pop, uh, it's popped a little bit more. You can see I made a tiny adjustment in tone, a little adjustment uh, there in structure. In fact, I think I'm going to move HDR look a little bit, give it a little bit more kind of oomph or pizzazz. Uh, and then I made some adjustments to color, right? So one more time, there's the before the door adjustments, there's after. It's not a big change. Uh, I just wanted to give it a little bit more, more zip there. Um, and so again, uh, I'm pretty much done. You know, so in the last couple of minutes, we took the ori original image, we created a mask around the door, inverted it, took all the color out of the image, uh, and then copied that mask to another layer and added a little zip to the door. Uh, to show you again, there's the before, there's the after, and I like that quite a bit. But the other thing I like to do with these kind of images is experiment with tones. So I'm gonna open a new layer and call it Tone Variations. And this is an opportunity for me to go in and sort of jack around with the uh, with the black and white section and, and change some tones. Uh, but I need a layer for that, or excuse me, I need a mask for that. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna copy this layer, so you just go copy mask and then you come over here and you say uh, paste mask there you go and once again you want to invert it because here I don't want to work on the door I want to work on everything but the door so I'm going to invert mask and if you look here that mask is going to match that one on the black and white layer I could have just copied it from black and white instead of here but on this uh, if you remember on this uh, layer for color I did a couple of minor adjustments around the mask and so I wanted that that to be the mask that I was inverting so here we go. A couple things you can do. Now that you have that uh, black and white layer, what I wanted to do is sort of mess with the tone. And so I'm going to come over here to the temperature and go for a little bit of a silver kind of look. Um, dragging that left will aim it more on, on the temperature slider under the color adjustment. Uh, left will make it like that's really blue. And to the right, of course, you could go kind of sepia uh, looking if you warm it up enough. There's a strong sepia look, but the truth is I don't like the sepia look with the red door because it's too much in sort of the same family of colors. So I want some opposites to kind of play off each other. So here I'm going for more of a bluey kind of silver. And I think what I'll do is I'll take the tint a little bit to the right. Um, so temperature left to make it a little bluer, tint to the right to give it a little bit of that kind of reddish pink. And so let me turn this off. That's the black and white that we started with on this layer. And there it is turned more of a silver. And so while Aurora isn't exactly a black and white conversion tool, uh, MacFun does make something called tonality, which is really great at that. Uh, but you do have the opportunity here and the ability to go in and make these kind of adjustments, which, which uh, as you can see, work really well. So that's an idea. If I turn off this layer, 
you'll go, there it is. That's the black and white layer that we uh, initially had. And then here's the kind of silver looking sort of one. Um, but the, the other, and that's kind of the, uh, the other photo I showed you. Uh, but there's one more variation that I, that I showed as well. And that one I went in and I did some top and bottom lighting. So I kind of dragged these uh, top and bottom lighting sliders. And again, I'm on, I'm on this layer, so it's only affecting the uh, the black and white portions of the image. It's not affecting what's masked out, which is the uh, which is the door. So if you go in and affect these uh, top and bottom layers, uh, and then uh, with the top and bottom lighting, and then come in and, and do a vignette. I really like the uh, the way they do the vignette. Uh, vignette. You can uh, drag this left to get kind of a strong vignette, um, and I like that. It adds a bit of drama. But then you can also, if you want, just sort of bump up the center by, by moving this inner light to the right. So you can really draw on the differences between the, the vignette and how dark it is and the center of the image and how light you can make it. So let me show you before and after there. There's the black and white that we had uh, with the other adjustments on this layer. And then there it is, adding in the vignette and the inner light and just sort of messing around. So that's another variation there. Again, going back to the initial photo that we started with, very vibrant, very colorful HDR, something I like to do, something that I find pleasing to my eye. Um, but then here you go. There's something that's quite a bit more dramatic, very different, and that red door just really pops uh, on an otherwise uh, sort of colorless scene. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, I gave the, uh, gave the scene a lot of drama by bumping up the vignette and some of the clarity in the HDR uh, details and sort of thing in the black and white portions of the image. So that's it, really. Very simple, very easy to do, very fun, um, and it's a, it's a great thing to experiment with. I've been doing it uh, with a number of other images and kind of playing around, but this is the one I like best, and that's the one I wanted to share with you today. So that's it. If you have any questions, drop me a line, and thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.